joining us to talk about uh, the markets in the Fed, Steve Eisman, Senior Portfolio Manager at Newberger Berman. Since the last time you were on, Steve, and welcome. It's, it's good to see you. We have seen su surprising strength across the board, it, it, it seems like. And, and, and I, I wonder whether you can just give us your view, just uh, uh, flying at 30,000 feet, what exactly is happening in the economy? Is it, is it, is it organic? Is it uh, illusory for, for, for yeah, some I reason? think the answer to your question is no one freaking knows. <laughs> and everybody who comes on the show doesn't know. Right. And every, That's why you're and every economist, help many us. from my respect, are saying there's about to be a recession because the Fed raises rates, but then they'll admit there isn't a single data point that's pointing to that happening. I don't know. I, I, you know, all I can say is that 70 percent of the U.S. economy is consumer driven. The consumer seems to be pretty strong. They still have savings. They're spending money. So, you know, why everybody's getting so hysterical, I don't get it. Everybody should just wait. If, when there'll be a negative data point, we could talk about it. Until then, it seems to me the economy is just fine. I've seen, and just, just looking for all the people that were expecting this not to happen, there's a lot of excuses for why it's happening. I've heard a lot of the jobs created are, are temporary jobs or second jobs. Uh, I've heard. I, I've, I've uh, heard that it, there's a lot of government jobs. That, Listen, that, in my business, it. when you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. You know, but you see that on a screen. You know, economists can pretend till they're dead that eventually they'll be right. Like the people who say that for 40 years the deficit's going to crush us. They've been arguing it for 40 years. Maybe it will, but it's 40 years is a long time. So all I know is that the data is fine, credit quality in the banks. You know, Capital One, the CEO of Capital One got on and said he thinks delinquencies are actually going to start to go down in the second half of this year. So until somebody can give me an, an actual data point that says that things are bad, is it's it fine. Is it possible any of it is Keynesian largesse? It's, it certainly is. It's certainly possible. But you don't, see the, you don't see the government stop spending, do you? I mean, the, no. the $1.2 trillion so dollars count on that, 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 that I have spoken on is just starting. That all makes me think we're going to be back to MMT works. So why not do it? You know, that's way above my pay grade. You know what I mean, I, though. I, if, if I know what can, you're saying, but I, I, I don't have an answer for that. Yeah, it's a free lunch. Is there anything organic, anything good happening? And Productivity seems to be better. Uh, organically, I mean good. A lot of good things happening. But is it organically good because of productivity rising for something that economists miss? Everybody I, missed it. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I just know the data is fine. And I don't try and go t too much where beyond that. Where would the that. first signs show up? Because you do hear areas where they think it's a recession, whether that be in commercial real estate, whether that be... Well, but commercial real estate's been bad for a couple of years now. But where, but where would you look? If, if the but commercial, the, the problem apart? is that commercial real estate is not big enough. Not, let, let, right. let me rephrase. Office real estate is not big, uh, big enough, enough to have a real big negative some, impact some on the economy. Consumer goods sales have been weaker in some areas, too. If, if they, okay. Where would you look for things? I, I look at credit. You know, if, if consumer credit quality were to start to really deteriorate, like it started in 2000, late 2006, mm -hmm. okay. But, you know, until then, as long as the right. consumer is healthy, I don't think there's much to really talk about. Does it scare you that you're not more skeptical at this particular moment, given your history? Well, I said this on uh, one of your sister shows last week, which is, you know, I'm, I, I don't really short stocks anymore. I'm long only. And, and the line that I used was, I, I was born Jewish, but I've converted to long only. I thought that was a pretty good line. <laughs> and uh, and uh, look, I don't, I just don't, I'm very data driven. If you were to tell me that, that there was a real pocket of, uh, credit quality that was starting to deteriorate, I would pay attention. As long as credit quality is fine, it's fine. I mean, you're going to have pockets of problem. It looked like, look at NYCB last week. That was right. pretty right. bad. Right. But that was NYCB because they passed the $100 billion threshold, and the regulators were all over them and forced them to increase their liquidity and increase their reserves. But is that, is that a harbinger of future bad things happening in office real estate? Maybe, but it's confined to office real estate. But it, it, well, for NYCB, it wasn't just the regulators. It was the regulators, but it was also... And they had charge off. They had charge off. But again, right. office real estate. Yeah. It's, office real estate is confined to certain community banks and regional banks. It's not a big bank problem. Um, it, it's a CMBS problem, but that's, that's, investors will have losses. I just don't see a systemic or big problem at this point that's going to hurt the economy. We, we were talking earlier about... Uh, the inverted yield curve and how long it takes for a recession. 
and it's Super Bowl week, and right. I don't even know which team I'm supposed to. It, it, because I know it doesn't work, I don't even remember whether it was the NFC or the AFC team. It's, the, it's an original it NFC work. team. <laughs> know, if but, they win, but we the market fall. goes up. Right. We stop following it because it doesn't work. Right. Can, we, can we throw the... the Inverted yield curve happens here. Recession. Can we throw I, I, that on the trash heap? I don't think you can too? throw the inverted yield curve uh, on, uh, on, on the ash heap of history. However, because this is such a strange period post-pandemic, all, all the stuff that's happened, I, I don't think necessarily your old, you can pull out your old rules this time. Can you explain <clears throat> why the market has handled it so well that we're not getting seven rate cuts starting next month. I, I mean, we were counting on that. We were set up for that. It's obviously not going to happen now, and we're still trading higher. Because earnings are coming through pretty good. So, you know, look, at the end of the day, it's earnings that matter. It's earnings that matter. The multiple it's can stay the same. And, and the earnings go up. And the earnings go up, so you just do. So, do when, look, if we were in a situation where the Fed said they were not going to cut rates and this was a very bad earnings season, then you'd have a problem. But do you, do you the think the Fed's still going to cut? You know, I think the Fed has a funny, I find an amusing um, communication problem, which is that by very nature, they are unbelievably dovish. They know they can't be dovish, but they just can't help themselves. So last year when they had the, the, the dots, the, the, the dots were pointing to six rate cuts, I don't know how serious they were, were about those dots, but they're very insensitive to how badly the market wants free money. So then the market took off, and then Powell comes out and basically says, well, we, we really didn't mean but it. But it, it's not a communications problem as much as a Fed dots plot. Like, it's a stupid prediction it, tool. Yeah, but, if, but, 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 but they know how seriously people take it. If you know how seriously people take it, don't be so liberal in your dots. But it's just that every time we hear communication from Jay Powell or anybody else, they basically say, cuts aren't coming, the cuts aren't coming. And, and then they do dots. <laughs> So stop with the dots. Stop plots. with the dots. Yeah. Do you uh, ascribe anything to, to the Fed? Maybe would they err on the side of, of ease because of an election year? They like to keep, you know, everybody wants to stay in power. <sighs> um, I don't put much stock in that. I, I actually think deep down Powell is petrified of redoing Volcker again. And so he's, I mean, put it this way. They've engineered what looks to be a soft landing. Inflation is coming down. The economy is still strong. Why, why would you waste rate cuts now and risk a resurgence of inflation when, when you really all you really need to do is declare victory and say we engineered something really pretty fantastic? And we'll wait to see some data. If the economy really starts to weaken, we'll hold that in reserve. Until then, we'll just leave things the way they are. They seem to be pretty good. What's the matter with that?